So I'm going to show you the rear drive shaft out of a 2005 Jeep Grand Cherokee that had a vibration problem. This vibration problem caused the seats to vibrate in the front. I could feel it through the steering wheel. And of course, the most annoying was just the sound that it made uh, in between 60 and 70 miles an hour. It was almost unbearable, especially if you were coasting. Um, it was a little bit better if you were accelerating or had a constant torque through that drive shaft. But if you were coasting through that speed, uh, the whole thing would just kind of vibrate at this low frequency and it was really irritating. So I'm going to show you uh, what I found. There's actually a technical service bulletin from Chrysler about this. Uh, but for some reason, they only applied it to the export models. But this definitely was a problem on mine. Uh, so the technical service bulletin says that the grease could build up uh, on the inside of the boot. And that would cause it to be out of balance. So I'm going to show you here what I found and then talk to you a little bit about what this, uh, what effect this has on it. You wouldn't think that grease could throw a drive shaft out of balance, but it can. So let me show you this. So this first picture is the drive shaft after I took it off. This is 11 years and about 114,000 miles. So you can see that it's aluminum uh, with flanges at the ends that are steel. It's in really good shape. Uh, the aluminum's held up very well. Here's a quick picture of the steel flange. It's a, these are both weird flanges, both ends. Uh, the front side here is this round flange. Uh, I assume that they did this because they needed a ex little extra weight in this area uh, to cut down on some sort of noise. But anyway, it's a, this big round flange. Uh, the other thing that I've heard is that uh, if you have a square flange, then if it would ever drop and it would hit the road for some reason, the square flange could kind of uh, move around chaotically, whereas the round flange would just kind of turn as it's running down the road and it wouldn't uh, tend to fling around as much. So the, the big problem with these drive shafts and that everybody complains about is not being able to remove the universal joints uh, because they're staked in place. And that's correct. I've read about a couple people that have tried to do it uh, and they haven't had much luck with it. But the universal joints are not removable. They're not replaceable. Uh, I guess they could be removed, I guess. Um, but uh, anyway, they're not replaceable. Okay, so as I was disassembling this drive shaft, uh, I took the boot off. I took the two clamps off both ends. These are big, beefy clamps. Um, okay, let me let me address one question here first. First question is going to be, can you repair this and put it back on the vehicle? And I think that it may be possible, but the issue you're going to run into are these big straps that go around the boot. Um, they may call this a boot band or a clamp, but uh, the problem you're going to have is that this is a pretty thick material. It's difficult to bend it so it opens, and then it'll be difficult to hook it back. Uh, so I guess if you've got the tools, you may be able to do it, but uh, I wouldn't use a hose clamp because a hose clamp has that screw on the side of it, and so you're going to add material to it, uh, and then it's going to throw it out of balance. The other thing to consider, too... Uh, is that if you're going to take it apart, you need to mark it so that you can put it back in the same alignment so that the splines are not turned. Um, just put a line down the side of the drive shaft and then and reinstall it in the same position. So this is the picture of the inside of the boot. And you can see here, toward the right side on the bottom, there's this what looks like kind of a puddle of grease. And there was some grease in here that would move around um, so it was liquid still it looked like it was in good shape but this puddle was pretty well stuck in that position so let me show you a video here uh, just to give you an idea of what happens to this puddle of grease uh, as we're rolling it around here what we did was we rolled this boot and you can see that every single time that puddle of grease stayed right in the bottom uh, and it would pull it right down there. So it was obviously throwing this boot out of balance. So the question was, how much grease was there in this position, and how much would that affect the balance of the actual drive shaft? So this is a Visteon part. I wanted to throw this label in here real fast so that you could see it. Um, the, if you do find that technical service bulletin about this problem on these Grand Cherokees, they do mention that some of the very early 05s had this problem. And this is definitely an early 05. You can see the date here, actually, on this label, and it's saying March of 05. So this is definitely an early part. It does say that later on they removed, or I guess I should say they lessened the amount of grease that they put in here to try to prevent this problem from happening. 
So I needed to weigh how much grease was in that kind of puddle that was stuck to the side of the boot. So what I did here was I took a paper towel, weighed the paper towel, and then I wiped as much of that grease as I could into the paper towel. Um, and this was really only that puddle. Uh, and then I weighed it again once I had as much grease absorbed from that little area as possible. And you can see here that I have about 12 grams. So 12 grams of grease doesn't sound like a whole lot. Uh, but now I'm going to get into some of the physics and engineering behind a prop shaft or a drive shaft. And I'll explain to you how this does have an effect. <clears throat> so this is a pretty big diameter shaft. Uh, if you've pulled yours out and you've measured it, it's about four inches across. It's just slightly under. It's about 90 millimeters. But by the time you add the boot on it, I'm going to call it 100 millimeters or uh, just about four inches. Um, just for ease of math here. So the balance of a shaft is measured in gram centimeters. I can't tell you exactly on this design, of course, where uh, or what that balance amount needs to be. But I can tell you that typically uh, you're going to see two-piece drive shafts balanced around 20 gram centimeters, and you're going to see one-piece uh, one piece drive shafts balanced around 10 gram centimeters. So in this shaft, if, you're, if it's four inches across, that means that the radius of it, of course, is two inches, and that's about 50 millimeters, almost exactly 50 millimeters. So if you had 12 grams of grease, and 50 millimeters, of course, is five centimeters. That would mean that you had 12 times five, which is 60. So that's 60 gram centimeters. So if I told you that these are balanced to have less than 20 gram centimeters of imbalance, and then you, and then your grease collected in one side of the boot and added 60 gram centimeters of imbalance to the shaft, then you can see why this would be a problem. So I, again, I do think that you'd be able to clean this thing out and reassemble it if you had the right tools. Um, however, you still can't replace the universal joints. And because of that, it's probably worth just going for one of the aftermarket replacements. Um, I actually bought a replacement from wholesaleimportparts.com and a little over $400 shipped. And it's a steel shaft. It weighs almost twice the amount that the OEM shaft weighs, but it's balanced correctly. It does have replaceable universal joints, and I don't think that it's going to have this problem. So I just thought that I'd post this so that you could see what the problem is that I ran into here. Uh, I know that there are a lot of people discussing the vibration on the Grand Cherokees. I don't know if this applies to all of them. Uh, again, that technical service bulletin that I found was an early... Um, only applied to the early models. So I don't know if it will apply to all models or if they all had this grease problem or not, or maybe they fixed it later on, but this was definitely a problem in mine uh, and it's fixed now. Thanks for watching.